Okay, this is problem 10. I'm going to do the isometric pictorial of this picture. So for the homework, the homework calls for you to do these missing view problems where you're given two problems or two views and you have to draw the, the missing view. Uh, you then have to draw some isometrics. I think of the six problems you're given, the instructions say to draw three isometric pictorials of your choice of those six. So I'm going to do this one as an example. You need the isometric grid paper. I don't know if you can see this very well. It's, it's really light. Uh, but it's isometric grid paper where lines are, are, are like this on the page. Uh, they're in this direction on the page. And they are vertical. Okay. So every uh, square, every square here represents one square in here. This part is uh, 10 wide. 10 deep and 8 high. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 deep. What we're doing is we're, we're basically drawing a, uh, a what we call a, I call a packing box. It's a box that, th that would fit this part just perfectly if it was a hard uh, if it was a hard part um, and you just slipped it into a box, the box would have to be 10 uh, deep by 10 long or wide. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, and 10 deep again. And I'm drawing these lines thin so they don't get in the way of my visualization, my imagination. So let's create a box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tall. There. First rule of carpentry, measure twice, cut once. So make sure your box is, and let me adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. Make sure your box that you draw is the correct proportions, the correct size. So it should be, this should be my front. Can you see that? My writing? Uh, yep, yeah, okay. This here should be my right side and of course looking down at it is the top and in the orientation of this we're looking down at the top as if we're standing in the front looking down over top of it so we have top looking down here right side looking that direction and Front looking that direction. Now I will use the terms width. Width goes across here. W for width. Okay. Uh, across the, the depth is this direction. So if you hear me say depth, I mean right to left on the right side view. Width is right to left on the front view. And then, of course, there is the height, which is the height of the object, H for height. If I just use the term length, that's just a scalar distance in no particular direction. Okay, so inside this box is where my part is going to reside. Uh, if you were to be solving a jigsaw puzzle, how do you start a jigsaw puzzle? You start by putting in the edges and the corners, right? That's the easiest way. It's the same th way for drawing an isometric pictorial, except the edges of a three-dimensional object are the faces of these planes, of these surfaces. So what we want to do to start our isometric pictorial is draw any plane that touches these three views. So the top, the top view is uh, plane D. If you bring out your my solution for this, plane D 
Maybe I can put this aside here. It's pretty tight, but there is plain uh, D. So if I were to draw this thing, this back corner is right here. So I'm going to go four units forward to the right, four units, two units back, two units to the right, two units back, and back to the beginning. So let's darken that in. As soon as you know where an object line is, you darken it in. So keep your construction line for the box very light and make your object lines very dark and your mind will quickly pick up on that and help you visualize what's going on. So that is plain D. That's the only thing that's touching the top of the packing box. <coughs> the front of the box is plain G. Don't look at the front view, look at the right side view and you'll see this is the front of the object. So plain G is touching there. So plain G is right here. It is, let's see, it starts two units from the left. So it's right here. One unit high. And it looks like it's about uh, nine units long at the top and ten at the bottom. So that's G. Okay? That's all it touches the front side of that packing box. Um, the right side, what touches the right side? The right side is this edge, eight, nine. Okay, the bottom of B. Oh, let me see. Right here, the very bottom of B, or this here. That's the right side. So all we have is it is two, four, six, eight units deep. Two, four, six, eight units deep. And B goes from here. Okay, now we've also done the numbering technique. Since I did the numbering technique, that helps me find some points. I know that this is point two. Let me get a sharper pencil here. Point two. Point one is here. Uh, point ten is here. That's what I know from plane D. From G, I know we have point seven here. Point nine is that nine? That's point eight here. Nine is over here. I already did the numbering technique. This this uh, helps me. Uh, where is point? Point six is in the back. Point five is in the back. Behind here. Okay, that's what I have so far. Okay, nine, we also know nine and ten are connected. So, that's a free line. Try and get it as straight as possible. Put a construction line in first. Once you get it in there, press hard. With a number two wood pencil, you can usually, in one pass, make it hard, okay? Um, okay. So we found everything that's on the th on the three faces, and now we've drawn our first line inside there. Uh, the other points, if you can find a point inside uh, this box, you can you can label it and then connect to it. So you know, drawing the lines inside, it's arguably the the hardest thing to do is to find you know an, a line that's inclined in here. It's pretty easy to draw a plane like C, plane C is a vertical plane that connects right here. It's pretty easy to draw normal planes in isometric. That's point. That's C. Okay? You're just drawing a parallelogram kind of on in the isometric paper. 
but drawing inclined planes that's that's in oblique planes in this part is the hard part but if we use uh, the this following uh, technique uh, it's it's graphed it's basically um, uh, graphing a line okay or a set of lines uh, if we were to say we can graph like an XY plane okay uh, and you've done that in high school I'm sure uh, if you I don't know if you've ever hand drafted or hand sketched a uh, uh, a three-dimensional curve in space XYZ graph that's what we're going to create right now an XYZ graph so at this point here the lower leftmost uh, front most point we're going to call that our origin zero 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 we're not going to use the terms X Y and Z because we've already labeled these things with depth and height so we're going to just use those uh, descriptive terms from here if we wanted to go uh, left or right this would be going to the to the right instead of saying X plus X this is going to the uh, to the left okay so if we wanted to go from this point to say this point we would say well we go right so many units and then we go in this direction we're going to say this is forward and if we go in this direction instead of saying y plus or y plus or minus y we're going to say backward so forward and backward is left to right on the right side and then of course we have up and down for a height description so if we're going up we go this way down we go that way so we're going to describe where any point is in this part by where the origin is so let's find point three we don't know where point three is okay let me show you where point three is point three is right here we want to find point three in the box so going from where's our origin right here zero 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 there it is in the top view here it is zero 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 in the front view and here it is zero 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 in the right side view okay so here's zero here's our origin here's our origin here's our origin in those three views and here is our origin in the isometric pictorial right there so from zero, 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 we're going to find point three. Let me bring this over here so we can see it. Okay, we're going to find point three. So from zero to three is six up. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is neither left nor right. And in this view, it is one, two, three, four, and call it four and a half back. So backward is this direction. One, two, three, four and a half back. So that is point three. Make sense? So points two and three are connected. We can do the same for point four. We would go from the origin, two units to the right, six units up, four and a half units back. So two units to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six units up, one, two, three, four and a half units back, and there's point four. Connect the dots. Okay. So you can do it do that. Point five. Point 0.5 is right here. Always look at two views for 0.5 because you might think 0.5 is up here in plane G, but no, it's actually behind G. It's on the bottom edge of A. So we're going to go one up, two to the right, and one back to get to 5. So one up, two to the right, and one back. That's 5. So 4 and 5 are connected. Not that. Don't have to visualize it if we have the numbers on there. Uh, plane F, you may at some point you're going to see things that are going to like, oh, I see what's going, it's coming together now, okay? Um, point 6 is here, okay? 
it's on the back side behind 7 on the back side of F. This is F here. Here's 7. 6 is one unit back. There's 6. And 5 and 6 are connected. And this line connects. So that's plane F. It's a rectangular plane. From point 6 to 1, 6 and 1 are connected, right? 6 and 1. 6 and 1 and 6 are connected. So that's kind of a freebie, too. And that's almost a vertical line. Even It kind of looks vertical. So it may be a little bit off to... Yeah, I might be a little bit off on that point 1. Looks like it's my point 1 is off a little bit. Okay, so there we go. It looks like a vertical line. It is not. The top is farther away from us than the front, than the point one is farther away from us than point six, but it looks like it's a vertical line. If we have a vertical line, that line is true, usually a true length line. This is a foreshortened line because it's actually coming toward us closer as it comes to six. But there it is, completely done.